Right. Uh, last time on Joy-Con's Bizarre Adventure, we had to deal with this turd. Well, it's not a turd, but it is definitely not the most comfortable controller, and more importantly, it has the wireless reception of something that has very bad wireless reception. My first reaction was, I need to get a better controller, and then it all sold out. And I don't know how, but I managed to get one. So we are going to compare this hacked together monstrosity with this hopefully better solution. So let me give the Nintendo Switch thesis statement right off the bat. This system, good. This controller, not so good. If you rail them onto the system like so, they're decent. See? You can hold them like this, it's fine. But as a full-blown standalone controller, this is not that great. Nintendo Solution pays $70 for a controller that should have been in the box in the first place. No, seriously, this is 70 freaking dollars. And more importantly, it was sold out everywhere for like the first month of launch and I just happened to get lucky with the local Walmart and look this is already so much nicer like this is honestly one of the most control comfortable controllers I've ever held there's like nice little grippy plastic on all the sticks there's a much wider range of motion there's a d-pad a d-pad Nintendo why is why is this d-pad so you are the co only company that knows how to make good D-pads. Well, until the Xbox One controller, at least, but still. The only problem is you can't stand it up, but... That's not that big of a problem. Here's the problem. These Joy-Cons would be great if this was actually a pocketable system. It does not fit in a pocket. This is a tablet. I am going to be carrying this in a bag or a backpack anyway, so why not just carry this around instead of having it as a separate add-on for these? Alright, so now that we have our controller, we need to actually hook it up to the system. And to do that, they provide a controller cable. I don't know why this is wireless, but apparently having a sync button on your system and on your controller is too much difficulty for Nintendo. So instead, just like the Joy-Cons, you have to physically connect the system in order to sync with the controller. Just like everything else on the Wii U, it's a uh, Type-C connector. Did, wait, did I just say Wii U? Oh my gosh, Nintendo, you're screwing up so hard I'm confusing you with other systems. No, the Wii U is dead. There never was a Wii U. There was only Wii and Switch. Do that. Do that. Um... How are you supposed to turn on this bloody thing? Do I have to turn on the system again? Did it fall asleep? Yep, yeah, okay, yeah. Good, okay, all right. What's the battery level of this controller? Are you gonna tell me? The battery level is buckets, okay. So, one of the uh, ways you can tell if your left Joy-Con is screwed up is with the calibrate, calibrate control sticks option on your system settings. As you can see, I don't get the full range of motion, and it goes in and out, and it's an occasional just loss of connectivity. But if I switch over to the to the Pro Controller, full range of motion, I'm gonna go where no Joy-Con has gone before, which is five feet away from the console, and I still have pretty smooth movement. So yeah. Uh, these Joy-Cons are basically going to sit permanently on the system now and never get used because the Pro Controller is just better in every way. The Joy-Cons are just, uh, I don't like them. Maybe, maybe they'll be used as second player controllers whenever there's a second player game on this system, but that's not going to be for like another month. You should buy a Nintendo Switch Pro Controller if you've already bought a Nintendo Switch. $70 is within your budget and you can find one near you. I still don't recommend buying a Switch unless you really like Zelda. Wait for more games to come out, though.